and I figured this is a good crowd to try it on. Uh, it's actually in response to a calling from the University of Michigan and Arbor's Michigan Quarterly Journal. They have a piece that they're looking for. They're looking at doing an edition that is focused on the subject of water and its uh, geopolitical, uh, uh, um, how it's used geopolitically or how it's used in um, cultures sort of mythically and in ways that they can focus on sort of the water crisis and the environmental crisis that's going on in the world. And as um, right now we're experiencing the Lebanese Re revolution that we talked about, uh, a lot of that is in response to environmental issues. And uh, I'd like to touch on that and try to do a little bit of a juxtaposition here. Uh, so again, it's a work in process, progress and this is very rough. So please, if you would can allow me. What is that? Can we publish? Yeah, you're fine. I will. I'm going to edit it very much, though, just so you know. Yeah. It's called, um, well, right now, the working title is Dreams of Water. I believe that you have inherited from your forefathers an ancient dream, a song, a prophecy. Hold on before I start. Okay, so I, <laughs> I want to also tell you that the purpose is this is a, a, a documentary the documentation poem so I am using uh, texts from other places that are not me uh, interspersed with my own lyric voice so um, I'm using uh, Khalil Gibran of course who shaped a lot of my idea of what Lebanon is and what Arab Americans are through breeding and then I'm also using an actual report of the uh, the environmental state of Lebanon at this time okay dreams of war <clears throat> I believe that you have inherited from your forefathers an ancient dream, a song, a prophecy, which you can proudly lay as a gift of gratitude upon the lap of America. I believe that you can say to the founders of this great nation, here I am, a youth, a young tree whose roots were plucked from the hills of Lebanon, yet I am deeply rooted here, and I would be fruitful. Khalil Gibran, 1926. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, there are parts of me today that still cannot speak. Separated by birth, the linguistic barrier border wall, the formulation of communicable sound and tone, verbal non-acquiescence, guttural stop veils, one is here and one, I like to think, passes over me, like so many clouds growing heavy with my life's absorption, living in the skies. A disaster. Verily, American living demands no want of the English language more than a business tongue. I am demanded by collar, by alarm, by state, the thick snow of emails, the myriad torrent of conference calls, meetings, checklists, coordination efforts, I channel and assume. Verily, I survive by words, spoken, written, swallowed, forgotten, recalled. Verily, work as a lifestyle, schooling as premeditated obligatory preparation. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, a disaster. She stated it directly as the first thing, first response, first retort, first effect, first meeting, two pairs of eyes, one occident, one orient, both romanticizing an elsewhere fantasy that only a somewhat exists. Verily, I'm sorry, it's a disaster to live here. Verily, I was marveling at the whole of Lebanon at night. My first vision of the open sky, Rafiq Hariri Airport, the sloping hills around Beirut, how the lights from all the homes in Shamoun, Shweifet, Aramun, jeweled in the distance like pearls and diamond thread in all their bounteous rows, laid on the bare sternum of the bride, her shoulders, the mountains, her breasts, the city, her face, her true beauty, yet hidden by stars. Verily, this is my Lebanon. It's a disaster to live here. In Fnaidak, in the north, this dump has been polluting the main water source of the village since the mid-1990s. Even if dumping should stop now, the trash will continue to pollute the resource. It's a disaster to live here. El Isbele, the trash. Look behind us. Look behind us. Look at the fire up there towards Beit Shema. They are burning trash up there. Where are the municipalities? Where is the government? It's a disaster to live here. Verily, her perspective. Verily. The pervasiveness of its meaning, corruption, mismanagement, theft, 
and the way it trickles down as snow melts from the peaks in spring, forms the rills and rivulets the way they leap in bows, feed the valleys with song, or the clanging of metals, or the ringing of the trucks at work, or dumping. Verily, the dumping. In Nahar Salib, you can see a scar on the landscape where nothing will grow over 30 years after trash was dumped on the side of the valley in the Civil War. Verily, the dumping. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, my perspective. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, I say to you that an olive plant in the hills of Lebanon will outlast all of your deeds and your works, that the wooden plow pulled by the oxen in the crannies of Lebanon is nobler than your dreams and aspirations. I say to you, while the conscious of time listened to me, that the songs of a maiden collecting herbs in the valley of Lebanon will outlast all the uttering of the most exalted prattler among you. Khalil Jibran. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, my father will not dance the debke at my wedding. He will not swing the mesbaha for my zephyr. Somewhere along the way, tradition was lost. Verily, this exile is two generations self-imposed. Verily, when did you come to America? My father was born here. Have you been, in, have you been to Lebanon? Yes. Wayne Betru. Verily, the Arabic was simple. Where did you go? I hesitate, recall my lessons, think in flashcards, look left to my fiance. She responds, his mother's American. Verily, shame. That evening, bedside Moleskin, I write down all the places in Lebanon I went or even could remember. Hamra, Harissa, Halei, Juni, Jbel, Sheri, Baalbak, Ala, Shkiv, Tibnin, Mlita, Jaita, Saida, Bint Jbel, Ras Al Ain, Harmel, Jamaiza, Badara, Kurat Al Sauda, Al Ain. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, this is a language my father left behind. I reproach him, I reproach me. Most of all, I reproach me for my failing, failing to scrape the mirror of this existence with a delicate, diligent sequence and cord, reveal that which is already my right, my name, my blood, inherent in my dreams, behind but one more act of unveiling, Morphe, the pith beneath my shell. Verily, I have dreams. Ludic, fantastical, where I am misted and robed by the elements, above water, always water, as a boat floats in stillness, a distinct being, coarse cloak, singing in the old language, and never in my life has my lifeblood locked in understanding with anything the way I understand that Arabic, the way I understand that construction, arrangement, mood, that song. A disaster. Verily, my grandfather, Jiddu, was the lake, and we, the many who came from him, were the springs and the pools in this country. It's a disaster to live here. The Latani, the Latani is the country's longest river and its most important. It provides water to the Baqa, Lebanon's breadbasket. The Latani has been polluted by towns and villages. In recent years, the river has also received the waste from Syrian refugees. Further downstream, Farmers use water polluted by industry, pesticides, fertilizer, trash, and human excrement to irrigate their crops. It's a disaster to live here. We tested the quality of water. We took samples of the water seeping from the trash. We found all types of bacteria that should not be found in water. Mish lazim bitkun maujude bil That should not be found in water. Following the heat wave, with temperatures hitting 30 degrees and rainfall, the count reached 2,000 trillion bacteria per milliliter of water. There is a big chance that the bacteria and the high bacterial count infiltrated the groundwater. It's a disaster to live here. Indeed, we found heavy metals in water. For example, we found mercury, copper, lead, cadmium, chrome, and nickel. We examined the soil or soil that is, irrigating, that is irrigated using this water and planted with vegetables and fruits. We found traces of the same heavy metals. We also tested for nickel and chrome in parsley and mint. The amounts found were 10 and 30 times above the allowed level for human consumption. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, I dream of childhood, your garden, parsley, yes, mint, yes, and rows of long cucumber, 
green and red juicy tomatoes, yellow peppers with the hottest seeds, pear and fig trees, your hands rough to touch, rough with work, my hands, the scent of earth. Verily, you are walking, the hills of the south, picking fruit ripe from the green terrace trees, the earth is red beneath your feet, the sun is beating on your brow, the harvest is plentiful. Your mother calls you in, there is wara anib or mukhiya on the stove. The house is the same, on the road with the stair, I imagine it hasn't changed much. The land of the prophets, milk and honey. Verily, the land of milk and honey. It is not only human health that is impacted by the pollution. To prevent his bees from consuming the Litani's polluted waters, beekeeper Muhammad Ajimi set up a tank and a dispenser with clean water near his hives. Verily, the land of milk and honey. It's a disaster to live here. A woman holds a cardboard sign at a village protest in Arabic from Quran. We made every living thing from water. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, is Bele as, a, as an export? Is Bele as a motif? Is Bele as an art form? Is Bele as a concept? Is Bele as... Tell me it's a dream. Verily, a whole nation's tears turn the Arab milky. Verily, ache. It's a disaster to live here. We have to make sure that our rivers and lakes are not a dump site. A disaster. Verily, the water is corrupted, the land is sick, ailing, white phosphorus drops from plains, warfare unaccounted, we are a neglected people. I too have neglected my people for life otherwise. It's a disaster to live here. Verily, the land is sick, Jiddo, like you were in those last days. I still remember our final conversation, if one might call it that, then. I did not even know to say 